great. We are waiting for the rest to come in. And uh, I think we are going to go now. I introduce myself. Uh, so, there's a slide where I prefer to introduce myself. I am Nehal Kotar, founder of Team Nomic Consulting. I spent more than 22 years on the corporate side uh, in HR and operations, ranging from manufacturing to banking, financial services, and FMCG. Uh, throughout the 22 years, I've been in various positions at various levels, right from ground up level. So I understand the nuances of working at the uh, junior most from uh, to the head of HR, where you actually need the stakeholders and founders and founders and founders business heads. Uh, and therefore, the, the variety with which I've been blessed with working with so many people and a few organizations throughout my career, uh, the part of
failure to put people's strategy or a lack of people's strategy or lack of giving its due at the right moment. So they might not be able to time it, but if you do not work towards it, you are out of the field. Those are the three people are going to try to do this. Sure. Can you frame it into some examples? So I will not talk about this. I will talk about glossy failure and then they have to be selected also. Five years ago, Zomato, they got a big round of funding. Right? Who knew Zomato five years ago? Six months later, they were back in the news after the funding. That they hired a number of people, thousands of people. Six months later, 80% of those people were fired. Why did they have to fire 80% of the people in six months after that? They got funded, but they didn't have a strategy in place. So what are they going to do with that fund? How is their people strategy aligned with the business vision? Right? Everyone went crazy. Direct shuru karo, you go left, right, center, right? Yeah, I have seen this. Yeah. So they came back, okay, because their investors really back them. But not every company has investors who keep backing them with a failed strategy like that. And today what you see of Zomato, it could have been three years ago. So just see how the impact of a failed people strategy has probably lengthened the process of them reaching where they are today by three years. And three years in that industry is a pretty long time. I mean, they, they encourage the sweeties of the world to actually overtake, right? So they, they created more competition for themselves because of a failed strategy. So when they were ahead of the curve, they fell back. Four HR functions play a critical role in an organization's growth and sustainability. Finding the right talent, I think all of us out here struggle uh, in some way as far as finding the right talent goes. If by your own I got you having a conversation for own morning. People don't understand what onboarding is all about, unfortunately. Talent management. Talent management is the widest scope within the overall HR spectrum, which ranges right from your hiring the right talent, onboarding is a part of it, and, right, and ensuring that the entire employee life cycle is taken care of in a manner where your talent remains within your fold. So, exit should be the last option of what a person should be thinking. How do you reduce your attrition rate is all about talent management. And then you have common pet, which you all are part of in some way in terms of the process. What is HR? Why do we need HR? We need to have HR strategically aligned to effectively participate in building your business. It has to be there in operationalizing. So again, if you go back to the example of survival, operationalizing. Had they had the right people then they would have operationalized a lot of their initiatives five years ago or maybe four years ago, rather than maybe two years ago. So Zomato Gold is now in for, for its third year. So they could have had a Zomato Gold four years ago. And probably they would not have faced the issue of what they faced in the last three months of the Zomato Gold going off the restaurant list and everything, right? Because they, they were the premier uh, company to come up with this. Setting up and managing HR functions are often a challenge for companies. Why? They take the focus away from the board. What matters the most? So, we, this is for the people. people. You have your tag, do what you love. Right? This, this is exactly what we say. Do what you love. You love your business. You love your business idea. Stick to your business idea. Leave the other, other functions to the experts. That's why business building Scaling, scaling up your business, sizing your business by and improving the bottom line should be your focus as a business leader. HR is, if HR is not your core area, if it's not your core competency, do not delve into it because it's more complicated than you think. And you will spend more than 50 to 60 percent of your time addressing people issues. And because of which you will lose focus on the core, which matters the most is building your business. Focusing on 
the three approaches of managing HR. One is doing everything yourself, right? And everyone believes we can do everything on our own. And everyone can. I'm not saying you can't. Is it efficient? Is it worth it? Is it worth your time? Or do you think you can spend more time on developing your business and focusing more on how to grow your business in allied areas or adjacent industries or Second is hiring full time HR personnel. Fantastic, I have been a full time HR personnel, so I, can, I can't say that that is a bad option. But depending on the kind of size of organization you are, it might not be the most efficient way because if you're an SME, you might be able to, you, you, everyone would have a particular budget for HR. And typically, HR is the lowest budget by the way. HR and IT are the two which are typically at the bottom of the curve as far as people's mindset is concerned on paying. So, you, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. I'm not saying those HR guys will be monkeys, but you'll expect them to do everything A to Z. But at that price, you will not get somebody who can fulfill that because he, won't, he or she won't come with that kind of experience. Or not have gone through the entire cycle of what somebody with 15 years will have when you get somebody with 4 and 5 years. So, again, you're diluting the entire functionality and you'll always breed within your system that, you know, HR is a You just do normal salary processing. That's about it. You treat them like unknown pushers, but they are not supposed to be unknown pushers. Right? The third is outsourcing HR pushers. Yeah. Outsourcing HR is a good question. Ask the question. The second is like full time HR person. Yeah. So, like, we don't have HR person for full time. Okay. So, like, we have hired three HRs part time or like they come for a day or a half day. So, like, in our office, like, uh, Accounts is there, small small departments are there, but they are not skilled like, to the mark like MBA or a graduate. So, like, if a HR comes, you would be happy, like a day off or a half day off. But in the end, if I ask them questions, what do you learn? So they would be like, who I did, I and like, it's okay. But they are not like too keen if we teach anything to someone, they are not keen into that thing. So, are you talking about learning and development? Yes, yeah. why are you talking about HR also? HR personnel, full time you are telling like so Full time HR personnel for what functionality of HR? Uh, functionality as in development like So learning and development typically yeah. unless you are a very large organization nobody keeps it hmm. Even the larger organizations we get trainers from outside right. Okay So we, you would have people who would help you in identifying your training needs But running the program is typically you use an outsourced uh, training company Unless you have a, I mean unless you are like even, even for the matter, even the Reliance industry gets trainers from outside and coaches from outside. Because every aspect of training cannot be handled in person. Okay. So trainers, yes, you will. How do you plan your training program? So coming to your question of training, how do you plan your learning program? Have you assessed the need? Or you are just doing it as a big box? I have assessed the needs, like what you assess the needs. Yeah. How are you, how are you? But they are not addressed fully. Because of like how is exactly my point. So then the thing is of how are you are you co-creating the content or are you giving it to a third party to say may you come to No, I have given him fifteen percent or like seventy percent. And thirty percent she gives or HR personal and like what the my question is very different see. Yeah. When you identify a need hmm. for a learning program, what 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 is the basis of identification of need? How have you identified it? Uh, Competencies and difficulties my staff is facing. So is it documented? <laughs> so what will happen is it's a thing works. Because you are the HR person. I am the accounts person. I have to show at the end of the year when I put training here, I will attend some other thing. As you have to put the Excel in the Excel. First and foremost. Because I'm going to advance Excel seat. Of that 
learning. What is the efficacy of that learning? How much of that has been implemented by that person? What is the improvement in the person's uh, regular working? If it is supposed to help the person in enhancing the skills, right? By enhancing skills, the regular working needs to get done, right? So have you have you evaluated that? So first, you need to get your project by setting the right process. So outsourcing HR function, by the way, is not just learning. When I am talking about outsourcing HR functions, I am talking about way more than that, right? So hiring full-time HR personnel and coming with the outsourcing of HR functions. When you are talking about outsourcing HR functions, it starts right from your entire life cycle. Or you say there are certain areas in HR that I want to outsource, depending on the size of the company. The, the most important one, which is basically your Compensation, the payroll management, because typically that is something that you do not want to keep in house. A lot of leakages of information has taken place through that. And then you have people like that who actually take care of the payroll aspect and the taxation part. Because it's a very sensitive issue for employees. Any extra tax card or anything to see lesser than that, the accountant will rest on them. Or they can be called up, they can be taken to task, they can be fired also. And if you start with a new number of fire, you say, my name is a so-called guy, come on, guy, a thousand guy, come on, guy, what's your problem? Okay, okay, next time, then, then, we'll get it done. For them, accuracy matters. So it's accountability, it's efficiency, really efficiency in the entire process. The other, the the other important aspects apart from the payroll and compensation side is looking at the entire life cycle. So starting from your hiring to even before that, I would say it's right from designing the log structure, designing the organization. Then going to box structure, then filling in those boxes of where within the organization what kind of talent will you. you how many of you, uh, you are an HR guy also, right? How many of you write a job description to hire people? How, how, how descriptive is your job description? I mean, it's relative. It is relative. Uh, depends on the position that you have. If it is technical, anything. But, uh, we got summary and a description and it goes into one to one and a half page. Okay. Fantastic. Sir? Same length no, about half page. Which are? Like short, what I need and like what I want from it. What is your hit rate on a time? How many candidates do you interview to fill up one position? First of all, don't forget how many interviews. How many you screen? Five, five. So again, I would like to add here that about three-layer process. So first is a screening process where our hiring team will actually screen as per the criteria. So when I give them JD, I also give them questionnaires that you are supposed to cross verify. Uh, so after that is over. So you are the HR manager and you are the founder and you are So I have a policy and process set for everything. I don't get involved if your hiring team is there. Why do you need to set let them set the parameter? Why are you setting the I take care of it. So for our way, our team is very our team is very small that way. But that's the process that we follow and I understand and relate to what you're trying to say. So I'm just saying how many how many candidates do you speak? What is your victory? Oh hardly anything, hundred percent. Almost hundred. Because uh whoever you speak, do you hire? No, 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 not. I mean I think the idea that's it, but how do you speak? After uh, speaking, in your three-year process, it will be three or four percent max. So when you're actually when your search is on, three to four percent is a is a dismal number. Because how much time are you spending? So after, I mean, I would say pre-screening is that is the hit rate because people apply for advertisement like left right. But post screening, that is quite. Good. So there are different channels one should use to make it more efficient. How much time do you and your team spend? Because the application that you receive, you use all different channels. So, Jack, we, we can discuss that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would I'm like just to. saying, I'm just saying, there are so many things which one doesn't realize. Now, you being in the HR field, you yourself, I'm, I'm giving you food for thought to actually go back and think that, you know, what is it that, is, can, that can make it more efficient. It's all about efficiency. It's all about targeting the right audience. It's all about targeting the, the need in a specific manner. It's not 
that you know, just because we are all, we all know that okay, you know, we have this available, so let's just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. But do, do you as entrepreneurs need to do it yourself? It's a question.
little around the average, you will rate the person a little higher because you like the person. Okay. So you are not keeping an objective. On the other hand, if you have set the parameters right for everyone in the evaluation process, so if you for that, you might think that you know I, I know my business better than anybody else, so I am in a better position to evaluate. But you are not really. You can run the evaluation, but the evaluation process setting and the parameters that have to be set, you might not be the right person to set. For which you need again the experts to come in and help you with that. So you might not need a full-time person. Just get somebody who will come to do your performance management process, you set it up, you have maybe you run it twice a year or you run it every quarter, there are some companies run it every quarter because of sales, rating companies run it every quarter because they have to evaluate the quarterly incentives, etc. and all of that. There are some who are annually, there are some who are buy Running that way, get the person to come help you run the process and set up the evaluation matrix so that you are in a better position to ensure that your people don't feel shortchanged. Because a lot of time, what happens in aren't that. That happens in the largest of organizations, but it happens in the smallest of organizations. So today, I mean, if you want to retain people, then you have to also somewhere cut out the bias which comes in by virtue of. Then you have your uh, employee engagement. How do you engage with your people? What kind of employer branding are you? How do you attract the right talent to your company? Do you have a strategy of actually uh, getting the toughest people in case? Toughest in the sense, if you are, a, say for example, a 10 crore company, and your strongest competition is 120 crore. You want to get somebody from the 120 crore to go 10 crore. What is it that's going to attract the most? That's the easiest thing, right? Everyone talks about the stake, but uh, you might not be able to give stake everybody. And if you give it to one, you can give it to others also. Never go and do taxation right? because their focus area is only cyber. Okay. 
okay or if a guy who is doing forensic will only do forensic so even if a smaller company wants to call him right okay. boss will come why will he so i'm saying the percentage of the people you're talking what is the percentage of those kind of people available who say okay i am right now doing only taxation for example in the big four if i go to a tier four tier three the tier two say for example big four here tier two is a gdo of the world and gdp of the world when you come up to tier three which is ca four which has got say for example about a uh, hundred people compared to thousands which are big four has or even a video has so why would a person leave a tier one grinding work environment work i mean uh, climate and the kind of awareness and the kind of accessibility to kind of clients you have out there coming to a tier three that's exactly my point one point you made but the percentage is what in this queue even even maybe three percent people might think that But if you want to attract five percent of the people, what do you need? You need some vision of the founder. What is what is it that he really wants to go out and achieve? Right. He can motivate these guys. That that's what I'm saying. If you are a you have to create an employer brand. Why would people want to come and work with you? Why does somebody want to come to Lexicon for being a content developer or content writer? There are type of dozen content companies. Why should they come to you? What is so compelling that they need to come to you? What are you creating? So today, for Jay, for example, why should somebody go and buy an app from Jay? And why should he have people who work for him come and work for him only? The USP. Correct. So USP is one thing. So I think employer branding has. Multi-faceted approach. This is my curiosity. I think don't don't tell it as a person personally. Don't take it as personal. But he always celebrated the aspect of employer branding. I'm very keen to see if you can show this as a small company or company branding of a company name. It's typical example of ten crore employer watching a one twenty crore and pulling him out. It's quite a coup. What are the key ingredients of the masala? So that's what I'm saying. It all depends from organization to organization. What is the masala which you are planning to create? So I can't give you an offhand because I don't know broad examples or whatever. And I'm saying so today, for example, she mentioned one thing is the USB. He mentioned the opportunity, right? So the key ingredients which come out. But time much deeper than that. And one is what is the vision that you're creating? Where does where does one see one self or where you see the organization five years hence, eight years hence, ten years hence, and where does that person fit in that class? How does a person resonate with what you are thinking about in terms of the organization that you are building? So I am saying these are personal things, but you have to delve and dive deeper into these because these are not conversations which will. Book, you know, which, which can give you an output without actually having a thorough conversation on the entire thing, assessing where you are, where is your competition. So you have to do a competitive analysis of where the competition is. So competition is your okay, work. Where where you want to be, irrespective of the competition, is most important. But it has to somewhere be relative. In relative terms, it has to. Well, let's put it this way. I hope you go. You must have interviewed many people. In your 20 years, maybe you must have seen many who have walked out of you or who have been there and then ventured out. So there must be some few key points in all which must have come. And this is what has to keep them out and they have moved in this way. There must be like seven, eight years vision and all those things. See, sometimes people move for money. Most of the time, people move for money. 50 to 70 percent of people really move for the money. Okay. And believe me. Very rightly touched upon a nerve which is very close to my heart. When a person is leaving, and when we have that conversation, uh, not on his last day, when the person thinks of you know, going home and says, "You know, I am done and I am getting the wrong shoe." The biggest conversation is on the money, and 
you know we let go of such people. I say, okay, if money is going to be driver, right, you should not be. Because today you will give him exactly what he's getting there, he'll stay back. Because loyalty is zero. Sorry, loyalty is zero. And I'm telling you, there have been cases where people have actually come back and said, we made a mistake, you should have Stay back. Well, I, I can give you one example. I will not name the person, but I can name the organizations. So at Edelweiss, we lost one guy who was a five rated guy for four years consistently. Consistently five rated. Okay? And he was growing every year, he was getting promoted. Almost every year he got promoted. He used to get a 100% bonus. 100% bonus. One when he comes and he says, oh, I have decided to do it. No, I've got a very good opportunity. It's okay. Well, it's a big name also, right? So, Gramal, in terms of their size of uh, capital, which Ajay Gramal put in, in the financial services business, was 25,000 dollars. Capital, forget what size of business you create. At that time, he was in key investment in China and everything. So, I mean, it was becoming a, as good as a bank, you know, maybe two lakh to work So, Edelweiss was not two lakh dollars. Edelweiss was about 30,000, 40,000 dollars overall in terms of both sides. We all explained to him. Then, when he sat with me one on one, I told him about two things. Three things. And then, first, are you going for the money? He said, money is an important I said, hey, it's important for all of us. But have you weighed the other things along with the money? So he says like, I said, where are you going to be in the organization? Where are you going to be in the organization? So no, they'll give me this position, that position, this, that. I said, what thing is culture? I said, do you know the culture at all? I said, every organization has this culture. It's not, there's no right or wrong. There's never a right or wrong. But you've spent five years here. The culture of Hiran and the culture of Piramal is very different. And mind you, I am telling you something which is inside of Piramal. There, there are going to be changes and you will get impacted in some way. Listen to me. He thought I was just trying to be here. In about 30 days, the guy left. Two and a half months later, one day he came onto the floor. I was just, I just thought I was going to meet all the colleagues, this, that. But I made him a voice, I mean, walking naked of that just to be here. I mean, this is ridiculous. And then I sat with his ex boss. I said, Kya, job on the Agya was the hot two years. And when I entered the body language, I said, What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I said, What happened? He says, Name of the organization with the structuring of the group. Change the organization has restructured. And this team has been restructured. So now, the position which he had is down by two notches. The money is the same, 35 percent higher than what we were making, and you still need to come back at his old salary, old designation. So it's also what, how you create a brand of as an employer, and which has that's why I'm saying it's multifaceted. You can't just talk about one thing or two things. Focus effort which goes to creating a brand which attracts talent in the marketplace because there are time a dozen of of companies which are in the same field that you are in. What differentiates you? Basically, we are sitting at Vivo, right? How many co-working spaces have come up? Why do people choose to work with Vivo? Or why do people come and take up an office at Vivo? There has to be something which is differentiated, right? They've created a brand which attracts the employee or attracts a potential employee to come here and work. It's not a it's a it's a continuous process. It's a continuous effort. You, it's not a one time. And therefore, if if a if a promoter or a company guy, you know, I'll run it one time, that one time is not good enough. It's money put to waste, the effort put to waste, not time to waste. It has to be continuous process driven. It has to have time and to do certain things. That's when you create. Why do you 
why do you hear of you know uh, when you see all these campus placements that take place, right? Just to give you an analogy to what you are saying, right? If I what you're asking, when you go to an IIT or an I or an ISB or any institute for that matter, why do they have slots of day zero, day zero, first slot, second slot, day one, first slot, second slot? Why? Which companies want day zero, slot zero? You have Merrill Lynch, you have got Citibank, okay? you have got uh, Morgan Stanley, you have got JP Morgan, right? you have got uh, uh, McKinsey, you have got Bain Capital, you have got HUL, you have got PNG, you have got uh, uh, KPMG for the CA Institute. But if you go to tier 1, uh, tier 1 institutes, uh, KPMG will not get filled. Day zero slot zero. Why? These are brands. You know, they are doing so much on their employer branding. It's crazy amount. Imagine an ICICI bank also, right? It's been like it's a premier bank. Whatever might have happened to Chanda Kochas, they are all both some bank over there. City bank may be over there. City bank may be over there. But why do they still maintain that day zero slot zero? Because they work on the brand continuously. They go to campuses. They do. They take initiatives. Differentiated initiatives. It's different. There are so many things to you know creating that work, right? It's not just one thing. And we struggle, we at that time we tell we used to tell these IIDs and IIMs, oh, so they're not giving us these you know, slots that we can look at the table, we are telling you can become 10 people. In spite of which you are giving them the slot only for one person. And if they don't finish, we can't get in. They vote. So students vote at the campus for who should be in which slot. So what is it? The branding is not only for your internal, it's how you are how you projecting yourself the outside. So it's a deeper conversation. That's why I said we can discuss it offline because it, you, know, you know we can keep talking about it for maybe hours together.
stagnated at the 600 crore level for the last three years. So our vision is to get about 1500 to 2000 crores over the next three five years. That means that so many people can be scaled up, give them training, so many can be scaled up. The people you need to add, so they wanted to add some five people. So you don't need to add five people. Don't increase cost, there's no need to increase cost today. Instead, you just add two people who are critical to taking you up that scale. Well, while I was doing the leadership assessments on them, we experienced my team and I that everything that we wanted details on, can we sort of everything goes upward right from an assistant manager in HR to an operations head. So when when we were talking to the operations team, we were talking to the production team, we were talking to the logistics team, everything. Empty sir, so everything is empty sir. In our, in our assessment report, we said the MD needs to come out of operations. And that's the gap we found that there is nobody who's willing to take on the account and responsibility of running the operations and therefore for delegation. So there are people who are there for 20 years. But even they, because of the stressful situation they are in, everything lies on the, on the table of the MD. And if the MD is starting, so be it, tap tap push So to the to the effect that imagine at we were sitting with the promoter over dinner at about 11 30, 12 in the night. He gets a call from his dispatch saying, Sir, I have a car. He came to the car. He came to the car. He came to the car. What truck? What one truck? So, five trucks of material has to be 1500 rupees for the overall cost going on. Nobody in that goddamn organization was willing to take a call of 1500 rupees. He said, Acha, main usko bolta ho. So I just told him, I said, hang on, just tell me one simple thing. Don't your people understand that each truck material of yours, which lies with you overnight, what is your bank interest? So he said, it's 50,000 pounds. He said, exactly. So is 50,000 more valuable or is 1500 rupees more valuable? And I said, do your people not understand that you are the kind of stress you are going through as a company today, you are reselecting your entire operation. 1500 the night. So everything falls in the plate ultimately at some point of time. All decision making will lie. So the other the other side, flip side of it is what? That either your people are not empowered. And you like maintaining control of every minute thing. That's how your business is not able to. This case was a classic case where he bought, he has given the freedom, but people wanted him to give direction. But in normal cases, promoters do not like to see the goal. They want everything at their desk, everything to be cleared by them and signed off by them. And see the amount of time and bandwidth that you go, that if your material does not work that day. So your onward client is getting impacted. Or interest cost is increasing. Credibility. Uh, credibility is a lot You are today, you are, you are saying on one side, I am down by 400 crores in profitability. Okay? And you don't have the basic of even letting a material go. Pathetic, right? How inefficient can it be? Then you deserve to be losses. Deserve the loss. So in this case, what was the root cause? I guess he was willing to empower them, yet they were not. The root cause is because he encouraged it. If he says, sorry, I am not accessible, you are taking the call. He should have put his foot down. And because he is operationally so involved in the day to day, so now we have ensured that he moves into a non executive position. He's become non executive chairman. We've got an MD in his place who's now looking after the operation side. And the guy who was been with him for 22 years was executive director. We have made a joint entry now. You have to look after this that thing. It should have been your job in the first place. You spent 22 years with the company. You do inside out. You know, my company is a stress, a loss. You should take that 1500 people. You know what the you are doing, meeting banks also, right? You know where your bank status is. This is. 
classical cases of so many companies which go under because the promoters themselves are not willing to see the growth and take a step back and say, sorry, don't come to me for this. You are saying I want to bring my investors down. So HR is another thing. When I say strategic HR, is you need to understand the business that you are with. So I could give him that entire dose because I understood his business. And I understood which is the pain point for him. And if I don't understand your line of business, and nobody that you know will need to give you relative uh, advice saying that you can do this better in this way. And how should your people be aligned to that one? So it's all about people alignment. So his people were not aligned to what he wanted to do. So we actually called each one and showed them what their assessment came to. Some of them were rudely shocked. Rudely shocked. We told them this is what you need to do. We gave a guideline to them up. That's when the entire restructuring of their top leadership team happened. In about two months, things are supposedly looking better. We only get to know over a period of six months to twelve months how each one has been. So value of outsourcing, cost benefit, you save on costs, uh, you get the entire gamut of experts rather than having piecemeal expertise that you might have by an internal team unless you are in a very large enterprise or a very large corporation. Strategic partnership with farmers and promoters. So when we say strategic is the example I just gave you of how we work with promoters and founders, we actually work in tandem with their vision, putting their vision as a prime driver, basis which we start developing strategies on the people front and how people should be aligned to that particular vision, what needs to be done. Higher accountability. For me, it's simple. If I have to come and work with you, and if I have to grow my business, if I dwell with you, you refer me to another five places. So there is no advertising grids that one can go on. It's, it's all on reference and that these kind of consulting assignments work. Why does a person go to KPMG? It's not because of the time. There are people who have had bad experiences in KPMG, and you know, you hear that KPMG is not because of the time. You go to Deloitte. Deloitte does a better job with this. It's all about how the referral works you know, and how it delivers. So it's, it's, about the it's about the delivery and the value that you create for your client. Right? Enhance productivity of each person. So again, I mean, that's been a constant part of the theme that each, each person has got a skill set and a competency which needs to be known, which needs to be, uh, I think, leveraged in the right way in the maximum of stock price. Went to outsource, contributing, which I mentioned to you. Contributing is one of the most essential parts of engaging. Uh, you need legal policies to be in place. You have to have hygiene factors as far as teams are concerned. Uh, basics to be in place. Identify the right talent and retention. I think all, all businesses face the biggest issues and identify the right talent and retaining that talent. Keep your internal resources focused. When the sense of a business growth opportunity and protection that you see and you want to move out of these nuanced areas which you might be handling today, but you feel that now with the expansion that I want to go ahead with, the growth that I want, I need to come out of this. We all need, it's not just startups, we all need people who are thinkers and initiative takers. What better way to uh, find people who can align with this particular aspect, who can align with your thought process, align with your, uh, your business aspect and your mindset? Because again, working with promoters is not easy. Every promoter is very, very different. They are all differently wired and everyone has a different way of doing things, right? The other thing is, as HR experts, we and we are very, very connected to what has happened. Not just in India but globally as well. So there might be certain businesses where you might have a global flavor or you want, you might want to get in investors coming in and they want to see whether you are uh, you have the best practices in place. Now how do we gain the access to best practices? That is through being connected, being uh, in the know, in the present of what is happening, what are the future trends that are coming up.
you are as good as the employees are. Companies as well as the employees. So if the employees are happy, the companies are happy. Basically. The employees are not happy, the company does not have a good uh, climate, does not remain profitable because efficiencies will draw up, their work areas will draw up, resulting in you know, either the business losses. So there's, a, there's a company that we work with, uh, it's in the media segment. They had a full fledged HR team with about a year ago. This is spent about three, four pros of the HR One finally they sat all of them. They sat all except for one person now is there who is a junior person. Because imagine a 120 member company running a 110 member business. And they didn't know what HR was doing. The churn was so high. India companies do have a high churn for our product. But what happens is it's all of people doing business like a content thing you know. So they would the graph would go up for two years. Next three years died because the key guys who are there were the highest performers were there in developing business for them on the media side. That's what the Biotech they actually and for them to identify the new talent for the HR team is taken one month to two years. So two years you had a close line of your revenue. So one point eight is just second. The biggest problem was again culture. Because they, they, they were not able to build a culture around what they stand for. First identify, first thing you identify is that you don't have culture. So if the person is coming and working, it is not what it really belongs. So that's where sense of belonging which comes out. Do you belong here? You might not belong when you enter, but how to create a belonging? That sense of belonging goes. I realized that I 
actually losing a lot of good candidates because we are not articulating ourselves in the right way. And if I am giving it to a consultant, so my one JD will appear in a particular way, my next JD will appear in a different way. It's all over the place. So we have, it's, it's scientifically now created that how a JD can be more effective. And only over a period of testing it with the kind of hiring that we've done, will we realize that yes, this is the way it works better than the earlier traditional way of you know writing a JD. So JD writing is like how it's content, you know, it's the same. What what is the most important part of content writing is exactly the same thing that you publish in writing JDs. Organization design and structure. What is design and structure. Most organizations believe that an organization structure is just good enough. Most guys run up for the meeting, put those boxes, put the names, and show the ones that are empty. And people don't realize the difference between an organization design and an organization structure. They are very different from each other. Structure is a subset of the design. If you don't design it, you will not be able to structure. Get your design right, your people's strategy begins to the design. Then it takes you forward from there. So, you know, when you're designing an organization, the design is largely around competencies and the roles. Structure will always be with the people in it. So, you plot the people. Then you say abuse to your role. Design is first the role. So first you create the roles. Then you start meeting people in different roles and then say, okay, for this role, these people. So if you don't have the roles in place, how are you going to them? So Zomato, same issue. They thought we have a structure in place. But where is our design? You define the roles that we need. Then you are force footing. What happens is you force fit. In a structure, you force fit people. Then you start moving the boxes from this to this to this to this because you want to force fit the person in your organization. And that may not be the best thing to do because the person doesn't fit in the organization. Why is he there in the first place? So again, it goes back to your entire strategic part. Have you actually worked on your people's strategy? Or you just got a line in hiring without a thought, without putting a science to it? That what is it that I would need? What is it that I want? Some people might want because you have an affinity to people, fine. Then go to force with them and let create a role for them which is for them. Person is supposed to be a sales guy. You say to him, what will you do? What will you do? What will you do? He does not have the expertise. He'll fail out there and he'll make he'll ensure that another 10 people fail in that. Because the minute guy does not ensure. Yeah, sure. Well, it is not uh, always that. Uh, any organ, I cannot make a generalized statement as much as it is yours. What happens is that uh, I use this particularly to get cross equipment or what the channel. Maybe it is good for my but it is for a short while. Ultimately he moves to where he is. That is that More is the internal job rotation that you do. That most organizations do, that's a very good practice. That is a job rotation for a temporary period. But when you're creating an organization structure from a longer term perspective, not short term. So today in a short term thing, I have been posted out of HR, I have done operations for two years. Then I was put into HR and that's when I started my HR career. And I said, okay, now this is what I want to do in my life. Okay. So internal job rotation is a good policy. So that's fine. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. I think when you are force fitting somebody in a structure, see what you are doing is a job rotation for 3 months, for example. Because you want the person to feel that our person who sales wala chata hai, production fellow thinks that sales kyun nahi ho raha hai. To go into the market, you will know what the sales guy is doing, you know. And what is the response you are getting on the product that you are creating. That is not a good thing to do. Because then there is awareness of and respect. You are, what you are trying to do is create a mutual respect for 
teams, you know, within the teams, basically. And that's very, that, that's a very good thing. But I'm actually from a longer term. So when you create an op structure, it's not a longer term. That today for, for the next two years, where do you see your organization? So I was talking to one client, uh, head of HR yesterday. They said they have created a, so I asked him, I said, you send me an organization for, uh, for these two teams which you want me to help with. He said, we have got an organization that created for the next two years. The next two years. Color coded, you get the color coding in this color. What is it? What is it not? What is available? What is not available? What we need to fill in 6 months, 12 months, 18 months. Just see where the organization is thinking. We are thinking 2 years ahead from today. So that's what you call actually linking your strategy. And that is a completely promoter driven place. So the last one and a half years, like you've been engaged with them, and this head of HR joined them about eight, nine months ago. She's created an entire thing. She said, "Yeah, no problem. We'll send you that. Now that's all in place for each of our units, each of our SBS. Very traditional business. So the promoter has actually started with throwing numbers from the next to the of something. Sorry. So the promoter actually started with this vision of. No, the promoter was guided. Promoter has to be guided. No promoter thinks that no promoter thinks this is important. They all believe that what what is life is somewhere. Now, some curling it. What happens is, as I said earlier, if I if I go back into one of the slides, it is at a time when you you know, wait, either you wait to realize or you think this will become so big from being unmanaged. It's unmanageable for me now. So what happens is it's a mess. The earlier you realize, you, you, you actually avoid the pain. But then there's pain which comes in. Then the costs are very high. See what happens is everything has a cost impact, right? If you do it in time, the costs are much less, much, much less. Once you're in a messy situation, the cost becomes very heavy. Then at that time what happens, the promoter always says, oh, cost, how can I afford this kind of cost? Or, Why should I have a I don't want to pay this kind of cost. The mess, clear the mess. We need to go and clean. Cleaners have to be paid. It's as simple as that. So, why I think it's always better to avoid clean a loss and clean a mess rather than just start off a little earlier in time. Because if you have a vision of growth in Tennessee, when you mentioned that they made a two year plan, yeah. so it is based or backed on some numbers thrown across. Of course. Of course. So it's a business vision though. So I always say that HR and business have to be aligned. HR cannot be isolated from the business discussions. HR has to have a seat at the table. If I don't have a seat at the table, you come to me six months later, hurry boss, now we need 50 people. From where? What? Why? I have no And then you say I want the person as of yesterday. Then you should have kept me on the table now, along with you. Hey, when you have a form here, in six months I will need to increase my headcount or I will need to restructure my organization Then I should have been involved at that stage and that's why I say it's a partnership which I can never, never be out of that partnership and so traditional, traditionally people have kept you know, HR outside of it but it has to be uh, noted that the shift has happened over the last 5-7 to seven years, especially post 2013-14, you know, when the downturn happened and all, and when again, you know, people went and hired in 10-11, uh, after the promotion came back, people hired and then they had to fire. <laughs> Firing is not something which is easy for a promoter to okay, let somebody go. Then you need HR, then again you have to rebuild your team, because then again times change, in 2014 to Modi coming back. So again you went back into the hiring mode. But it's not just hiring and firing, right? there's a whole there's a there's a, it, it's it's sort of process, I think it's more of human sensitivity, you know. People are sensitive. You have to be sensitive to people. There are emotions. There are emotions. When you fire people now, you will realize what emotions run through your mind and what emotions are running through the person who you are firing. 
So
They did not sign. They did not. When they wrote back over, they said, I will sign up and say, but Mira didn't know that. That's why, when you actually created a list, when I encountered that list, there were some people who came to the list, like one cleaner, they said, you cannot put this person on the list. Because in our legal system, Pulling it, okay, Lurki, Anemali, Lurki ka pair is not good. Uski zindagi ujhan ho jayegi. Uske paas. Khatam. The guy is finished. The female's life is finished. Somebody wants to have, somebody delivered a child. Somebody's wife delivered a child. Thus din pehle, uska naam is pehle. How can you be sensitive here? Wo bachche ko yari ki zindagi pa pulling it, tere wajay se, tere baat ko nobri gaya. Very, very critical things, you know. And people don't realize what HR has to go through. And 98 or 99% of the time, HR is cursed when a filing is happening. Nobody will, be, nobody will come and say, you have to hire me for the job for you. But when you are fired, when you don't get an increment, when you don't get an increment, when you have not got the rating which you desire, it is HR's fault. It is one of the most thankless jobs uh, and one of the times you have So you have to be so hard. Hard knows that fixed kid, kid ki care it doesn't matter. As long as my conscience is clear, I'm, I'm okay with it. You never get people to say, I don't expect people to say thank you. Some people come and say thank you, but never expect people to thank you. Your boss will also never say thank you to you, who's a business head. We think, oh, you don't want to talk there. You have to do it. So, you know. And the tangibility of what HR contributes huh, is not that. The biggest problem is there. There's no tangibility. Fortunately, I come from a business background, so I come from a business family. So I, I said, boss, ye to, ye ki, you know, after 15 years, I said, yeah, there is something wrong in business. There has to be some tangibility that we have to bring in. And I brought it tangibility. So one point I went to my boss, way before a place of time. I said, yes, I have to come here. He said, okay, what's your deal? I said, deal, we don't have to come here. We don't have to come here. How much money is there? So he went through it and he started laughing. He said, Achha, my mother is very good. I said, I don't have a bonus. I'm just showing you. You guys sometimes speak, what do you do? You only hire people for us. And this and that. I said, this is how much money is going. So what I say for you is an earning. So every penny saved you say, is money earned. I said, this is my earning. You put any of the business heads in this position and who's going to show you? They want, they want to see now what HR contributes. This is my contribution and my team's contribution. I made equivalent of one business line. So I said, don't ever question how tangible we are in terms of money. We can also show you tangibility. My team was shocked when I asked them to create that entire dashboard. Very important is performance management because leading an organization is always good. How, how are you positioning yourself? How are your people positioned? How are they performing? What is the health of your organization for their performance? It's all very important. Culture is very, very important. Orientation and induction of new hires. This is a part of culture building only. But this is somewhere where those organizations will create connection with their employees. It's more of a creation, starting point of connection with their employees. And how you actually run it is very important. How do you induct your new, new employees? How do you, what is the orientation you provide? HR technology. Lord is open about technology, technology, technology. So we've got uh, we work on these aspects. We've got HRIS with a partner company of ours for the same HR security and we make sure to talk that. Uh, we have talent intelligence. So we've got a tool which is on the HR analytics side. We will create multiple types of dashboards your entire analysis 
uh, we also have uh, business analysis module which is the sales and business. So sales driven organizations can use it and build out efficacy of even even to the extent of target audience. How do you get your target audience? Uh, that analysis can be given to the people that you provide. Psychometric analysis. So uh, there are various tools available on the psychometric side from where and I was discussing. So you have this, you have NBDI, you have Fire OB. But there's a unique one that we have which is more video based and uh, which, which throws up a different uh, kind of uh, experience in terms of the entire narration that comes in the recording. So retention, the improvement analytics, most of most of the people want to know how is my recruitment going, what is the kind of quality of things I'm having, how can I retain, what are the what are the uh, key aspects of retention? areas that we can bring about a higher retention level within the organization. We also, within that retention tool, there is a predictive analysis of who, what are the kind of people who are on the exit. So, you know, it's a predictive analysis. So, you really sometimes would wonder that how can the how system predict. So, there are various things that actually need to be inputted into the system, but it goes up the kind of people who would be in an exit mode or who would be thinking of an exit mode. You have your surveys within your organization of you know getting feedback from your employees and seeing what kind of uh, expectations that they have vis-a-vis what the organization is providing. Exactly. People policies. We create employee manuals for people, for companies. Uh, this is one of the most important and basic things which people typically neglect in the in a smaller size organization. Small, when I say small, I would say up to 1,000 people because even you know, a 1,000 people organization does not have an employee policy. Very surprising, but yeah, that's how it is. Because it's not even working over there. It has a one pager, two pager stuff. There is one company in which we are working with right now, just signed up until about two weeks ago. It's a 60 people company. It runs a 550 crore. Uh, well, maybe it's in the fintech space, it's in the financial services space. And they don't have a policy manual. So I said, what about Bosch? Ah, we in the chairman of the some company came, so then we realized that we need to have a Bosch policy. And they created something from somewhere. That's what it Not even Google, they have got somebody to present your, uh, you know, our law firm who we work with for our transactions. Uh, we told them just talk about Bosch policy, so they talk about Bosch policy. Bosch is a law of the last three years. So there are processes that have to be followed in Bosch. If you don't follow that structure, you can be speeding, duplicated. So I think companies like that who have existed for 10, 12, 13 years, running a 500 second floor enterprise, but you don't have these policies in place. How do you manage the need? Ah, you know, in our abundant data, we like you to get 10 years or 15 years in the year. There is a law for that, you have to to that you give it. How does your attendance get measured? What are the employee benefits that you are providing? There is a documentation. These are all available in modular format, so you are depending on the organization we can provide it. That's it from my side.
see a design cannot be just created without no understanding the business part, right? So one have to understand your business. That okay, this is what I'm wanting to create. So what is your product line? Now AI everyone talks about, but using AI for what? So what is your end product going to be? What is the journey of start, product launch, and running the product? So all this comes into play.
87 years, 88 years old, and we have uh, we have a family in trust which runs about 22 educational institutions. Okay. We were just we had a trust meeting three days ago, and one of the thing was branding that we were talking about and how do we brand. It's a brand by itself because it's that that institution has been in existence since 1940. It's almost 60, 70 years now that it's been in existence. But with the newer ones coming up and you know creating brand gulas and everything, how do we sustain and create a bigger uh, impact in the society? And there are 20, 20 or 22,000 students in all those institutions who are there. So imagine it is, it's not a small scale we are talking about. The problem is again mindset. So when we spoke of social media and we are all, we are, it's very active on social media, Facebook, Instagram, everything. So the institutions, each, each school or each college has their own management which that takes care of all of that. Okay? So what did that uncle say? You know? Says, you know, this person should you all form a committee of the branding part and how we should work for it. So, yeah. so one of the school teachers, the school principals who was sitting in that meeting said, you know, so and so person is very responsive. The minute we post that, within a matter of 15 minutes, we get a very good response from him. And he is very encouraging in his comments. So the said, And sure there is no misuse. You know what is the misuse? School is posting it, principal is posting it. But it's just that mindset that you are being cautious to that extent that no misuse should happen. So see how different people think differently. And he is extremely forward looking. Huh? At 87, 88, he can probably have a discussion uh, with a child of 5 years and tell the child of 5 years. Go down to that level of the fight for the child. But in this set of you have to be very cautious. There is no misuse. The admin is in your head. So, how do we change that? The problem we face is how do we change the mindset of the people? It is, it is a journey. It's not overnight. Like. You should know your, you should know your promoter, or you should know your process. You should know how to address it. Thank you, Mr. 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 Mr
it's all about creating the right balance. It cannot be too descriptive, it cannot be less descriptive. You know, again, it's also you know how the other person is going to perceive it. Because each person thinks differently, as I said, you know, so each person is wired differently. So therefore the impactfulness or, or the impact that it has to create needs to be done in the right manner. But there's no, I'm not saying there's a hundred percent foolproof method to do that, but it's a better way of doing it. Thai for actually yeah. 